Well, hello guys. Back out for another fishing trip. I hope the river season, or the commencement of the river season, has treated you all kindly. And I have decided to come out tench fishing again. Do excuse the road noise. It's always a bit loud. And my apologies to anyone watching who's got sensitive hearing. <laughs> I fully appreciate that it is noisy. Anyway, decided to come out today. Very sunny conditions. Didn't get down as early as I would have liked. I would have liked to got down around about 3 to 4 in the morning. Uh, didn't get down till 8am. Got to see a nice bit of steam rising from the water. But I was going to start float fishing and um, I found that the um, swim that I decided to fish after I plumbed the depth it was around about 15 and a half foot. Now bearing in mind I've got a porcupine quill on. Um, I went to reach for my tube of floats which has got all my floats, my wagglers, my quills etc and I haven't got it in my bag, I left it on the kitchen worktop so the choice to be able to pick a nice waggler to fish a sliding waggler setup, perfect for deep uh, swims, um, that was out of the bag. So I decided to now switch to link leisure on the float rod and uh, just fishing an 8mm halibut pellet with a few loose pellets scattered around in a PVA mesh bag and the other rod out on my usual, which you've seen on my other videos, usual low resistance quick change run ring running rig setup. That's 12 pounds Shimano Technium Invisitech and 7 pound 9 ounce Preston Innovations Exceed hook link material, very nice hook link material, very abrasion resistant but also quite supple and that's just fish as I say running rig and with a size 10 Palatrax the hook. Now I'm using on that particular rod 10 millimeter boilies, very sweet tooth boily um, and that's just fish in conjunction with a mesh bag of crumb boilies and I've been putting a few balls round of the Vitalin ground bait that you've seen on a lot of my tench videos and it's just a mixture of liquidized Vitalin mixed with bird seed, a little bit of corn in there, maggots, caster and then wetted down with water mixed with molasses so you've got a nice sweet scent trout but I'm not over baiting with that, I'm using you know two or three balls per rod as much as to say to the tench you know I know you can get preoccupied on the ground bait I'm going to give you enough to feed on but by heck I'm going to make sure that what you've got left there is more or less overall the hook bait and if you take it you take it, if you don't well <laughs> come come what be but yeah that's my two setups as I say link leisure on one rod six pound line two SSG shot size 14 pallet tracks a hook eight millimeter halibut pellet and as I say just loose feeding a few boilies and I mean literally a few five or six boilies and putting a few in a mesh bag and the same with the pellets and then a couple of balls over each rod of my ground bait which is the vitamin mixture that I've just explained now, it is really hot conditions, as I say, I didn't get down till 8am, but got a bit of a breeze on the water. I have, thank God, brought the umbrella with me. Uh, I'm still roasting, I can assure you, I'm still roasting, but as, as I say, a nice breeze on the water. And I still think we get a decent bite. As I say, the swim's deep, it's 15 and a half foot deep, and that's just on the marginal shelf, just as it shelves away. And you know, I would have felt such a swim in these kind of conditions with a nice bit of chop on the water and it's warm conditions. I'd be hopeful to pick up a fish, but on this water, as you know, I'm fishing for a bite. And it's, a, you know, my kind of fishing. I like challenging waters. I like waters that, you know, make you think, rethink, doubt yourself and chop and change your rigs and make you keep working for each bite, literally each bite and each fish. Uh, on top of that, there's <laughs> a massive, head of natural food on the lake. There's snails, uh, blood worm, you know, mussels. There's every single bit of food that the fish need. And if they don't want to feed on your bay, well, they can just swim by and look at it and say, look, mate, not having that. I've got some fresh grub here. I've got crayfish as well. I am not touching your bait. And you can, well, you can literally sod off, <laughs> to put it less eloquently. But yeah, I do like these kind of waters. I just do. I get an immense pleasure out of racking my brains and yeah some could say it's like beating your head against a brick wall but you know you shouldn't think of it as beating your head against a brick wall because as long as you're not stagnating just coming down for the sake of coming down and going I'll give it another go and you're going through the motions that's when you should have a break from anywhere that's you know a bit challenging and if you're not feeling in the mood for it obviously but I do like this kind of fishing you know you appreciate 
each and every fish just that bit more because you're really having to work for a bite. Anyway, enough of my gibbering and my jabbering. I'm going to crack on. Let's um, see if we can winkle a cheeky tinker out. Well, I've got my fingers, toes, all crossed in anticipation and always thinking positively and fishing positively. That's all you can do is make sure you're trying your best, keeping on thinking what you can do and what you can adapt, what you can change and make better, be that rigs or bait bait placement, ground bait, we shall see, it's a, it's a very very hot day, it, 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 as I said earlier on it's absolutely roasting, there is at least a nice breeze, a little bit of a northerly breeze. Got the old wood mice next to me, Keep hearing their chitter chatter, little squeaks and you know movement and, and more chatter and then more squeaking <laughs> as if they're conferring with each other. Shall I go and attack Mark's lunchbox or maybe Nick steal some of his fishing bread? Now welcome to a bit. This is everything about fishing and all the wildlife, everything that it encompasses makes for me makes fishing just amazing, a real chance to forget your worries and your problems for a, for a short time at least and enjoy the wildlife. It's like today as I say we've got dormice, well wood mice, not dormice, I presume they're wood mice, uh, scuttling about, I've had a, uh, water snakes going by, got lots of damselfly, uh, dragonflies, um, broad bodied chasers which is another species of dragonfly, emerald, greens. Had the kingfisher go by earlier. Herons. It's absolutely, you know. Who would not want to be a fisherman? Really glad that you guys, you know, appreciate them and enjoy the videos and you've stuck by my channel because you know it's been a bit quiet over the close season and I've only just kicked myself into gear getting out fishing again and getting out filming and it's amazing even though you're used to filming regular how you kind of become a bit rusty with it a bit rusty with being in front of the camera and almost a bit shy but it's nice to be back as I say filming and have you guys supporting the channel, enjoying the videos, and it's great to share your company on the riverbank 
via YouTube and via the videos. You know, as I said before, this is not not an easy water, not by a long shot. Can be a very, very unforgiving water, but it's got an allure to it. It's got a a beauty, despite the road noise. It's a wonderfully mature gravel pit. I think it's a classified as what you classify a second generation gravel pit. Uh, depths, average depths between. 13 to 14 foot but with deeper areas as well as I say the area that I'm fishing today just off the marginal shelf is 15 and a half feet so you've got nice areas of depth you've got your shallow zones as well areas where it can be as shallow as four to five feet which is still fairly deep but it's got a nice mixture to it nice mixture of features be that marginal features, reed beds, sunken trees, overhanging trees, gravel bars, gullies. In fact this area that I'm fishing in front of me is a bit, when I was running the rake through it and dragging the weed, it felt a bit like an upturned egg box. You could feel the different bars, which is always quite an enticing feature, although it can be a bit iffy when you're playing fish that you don't get cut off. But yeah, it can, can be very, very unforgiving and there's a lot of natural food and it can make it really, really difficult to entice the fish. But at the same time, it's one of those waters that just keeps drawing you back for another go, another attempt. And it's an ever-evolving challenge, but it's a venue where, you know, you easily turn up and fish and say, wow, I spent a day's fishing today on the most beautiful mature gravel pit and I blanked but you know what that adds to the spice and I'll be back again and that's how I look at all my fishing trips first and foremost enjoy what you're doing if you're not enjoying it then switch it up change venues go elsewhere or maybe take a break but do first and foremost enjoy your angle just being out there I appreciate every single moment that I'm able to be bankside able to be doing the videos to share with you guys and you know come what may come blank or capture obviously I'm more elated and happy to catch but what I'm saying is I'm I don't really get despondent and I do like my difficult venues I really do like moody venues Well, that was a pleasant scrap, although it did go into the weed bed and I did have to ease it off of there. And um, then it was cloaked with a hood of weed. But it's a nice looking tinker, very nice. You know, on this water at times you are fishing for a bite and you are trying your best to get them to tear themselves away from all the natural food offering that's on the lake. Water snails, bloodworm, crayfish, you name it, they've got a good choice to pick up rather than picking up a fisherman's bait. But yeah, very, very happy with that. That was on a 10 millimeter boilie. And um, yeah, really nice take and bite. Very confident. It's just nice, nice to, as I say, fishing per bite, fishing for a fish, fishing for a bite. Nice to get one. Well, there we go. A very, very welcome six pounder beautiful proportion to it it's got scars on both of its flanks certainly could tell a few tails obviously avoided being predated upon a lovely build it's 
stellar fight until it hit the weed bed where then I had to ease it out and it was a bit hooded and covered but yeah very very welcome and it's just on a um, 10 millimeter boilie with a few crumbed and crushed boilies in PVA mesh put out just off the marginal shelf around about 20 foot out underarm cast and yeah resulted in this fish and as I say on this lake you're fishing for a bite for a fish fish to fish that's all you're doing you're you're fishing each bite as it comes and is it and each fish as it comes but yeah I'll just draw myself back very nice eh? what a beautifully strong and healthy looking tinker very very happy with this beautiful condition lovely orange teddy bear benevolent eyes but well, I tell you they're a harsh mistress on here at times they really are benevolent eyes that belie a very clever fish <laughs> and a lovely paintbrush paddle towel very very happy Well, just that one fish. I did have another which took the uh, swinger up so far and left the bait in the weed bed. Can happen and certainly did happen. Didn't give me time to strike. That's the way it goes. Unfortunately, a bit of a bitter ending there with these guys turning up using a jet ski where they shouldn't be. There shouldn't be any jet skis or watercraft on this lake and it's a, it's a bloody despicable. I'm absolutely, if, if you want to know the truth, I'm absolutely seething and I'd like to use a, a plethora of other abusive terms for the trash that they are but anyway I'll report it to the bailiff hotline and hopefully these muppets will be down here during the weekend and the bailiff team can sort them out they shouldn't even have access to this area anyway I don't know how they got the the um, gate code without knowing someone who has got a fishing permit or maybe they've purchased a fishing permit and they're using it for water sports and fishing which is bloody out of line anyway didn't take them long before they eventually did cut across my area and went back to the other side and they were laughing about it how how absolutely bloody sad can you be I mean it's stopping myself here it's flipping pathetic but anyway it is what it is it's always been a bit of a wild west venue and if you go back to 2004 when I used to fish it you would consider that very light-hearted compared to some of the stuff that used to go on but regardless of that it's not right is it anyway hope you've enjoyed the video albeit just the one fish again but I hope you can appreciate I'm not fishing a runs water. I'm fishing a water that's difficult, got a lot of natural food. And what I'm not knocking anyone that fishes runs water. We're all entitled to our own enjoyment and of venues that we fish. But I'm just trying to say that's why you're not always going to get bags of fish. You're going to fish for a bite, you're going to work hard. And if you do, there's some nice old looking tench and very, very pretty ones at that. But you can do without it being made more challenging by pillocks like this turning up and using a jet ski <laughs> anyway if you have enjoyed the video do take time to share it on social media give it a like especially that would be so good of you and if you're not subscribed click the red button below and the bell icon icon and you'll be kept up to date with all my newest videos and a healthy back catalogue of the existing ones anyway until my next trip I'd like to wish you all well with your fishing I hope you're having a good time and until my next video, take care guys, tight lines.